Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm back. I was just uh, meeting with Joe Tucci and Mike Capellas in, uh, in an analyst breakout, and I uh, got some good information I'll share with you in a moment. This is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of EMC World, and we're live here in Las Vegas. And we have a good friend, Dave Cahill from Solid Fire on. Uh, we met Solid Fire a year ago at EMC World. The CEO, Dave Wright, uh, popped out of Rackspace, conceived and founded Solid Fire to be exclusively focused on the cloud service provider market. Flash, all flash array, focused on the cloud service provider market like no other company. Most companies sell flash arrays, all flash arrays, sort of broad set of use cases. Solid Fire is uniquely focusing on the cloud service provider space, and we're going to get into that with, uh, with David Cahill. David, welcome to theCUBE. Good to be back. Good yeah, to be so, here. Uh, so you moved to Colorado, a lot of interesting personal stuff going on, and yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to, to see you, you know, doing so well personally, and it seems like Solid Fire is really making some progress. You guys are, uh, are uh, as I said before, uniquely positioned in the cloud service provider space, but so why don't we get into it? Um, maybe give us the bumper sticker, because you could maybe maybe add some color to what I just said, yep. and then give us an update on where we're at. Yeah, sure, so, so guys that are building large scale multi-tenant clouds, it's a unique customer set, and the last year has done nothing but validate that for us. Uh, we've been in early access with a, uh, a handful of partners and or cloud service providers in that regard and continue to expand out that program now. And it's, it's as ev evident now as it was then that this customer set has unique challenges around scale, around automation, around performance, and around efficiency uh, that you don't traditionally see in the enterprise. And so we continue to be laser focused on that customer set, large scale multi-tenant clouds, and there's plenty of them being built. Yeah, so, um, so where are you at? Um, you guys are um, so, so going we, through your beta program and yeah, so we're heads, kicking the crap out of the thing? Kicking the, beating the crap out of the system. We are heads down, charging towards full GA uh, later in the year. Um, but the purpose of the early access program really is was to get some select cloud service providers uh, to, to beat the crap out of the system. Um, and, and let them um, continue to you know, evolve the services that they're going to offer based on the solid fire system and, and make it a better offering uh, GA, both from a infrastructure standpoint but also from a services standpoint because you know, these guys are, are advancing the way that we think about the cloud. Cloud 1.0 was let's move your data to the cloud. Cloud 2.0 is let's move your apps to the cloud. And so that's a mindset shift which requires evangelism on the part of the cloud service provider to the end customer uh, in addition to the infrastructure, right? If you, if, you, if, you, if you crack the code on the economics of high performance in the cloud, you open it up to a much broader application set. Yeah, so, um, so actually Dave, I want to see if we call an audible here. So you, are you hanging out here? Or you got something to do after this? Uh, so we are, I'm around. Can, so Sanjay Mershanzani, who's the CIO of VMC, we're going to lose him if we don't bring him on. I realize now, look at the schedule. You know, I, I take off for 20 minutes, everything gets behind. So if you wouldn't mind, I want to bring, take a quick break, I want to bring right. Sanjay in, interview him, and then bring you back, okay. and, then, and then pick this up. Would that yeah, be yeah. okay? Yeah, sure. All right, so listen, keep it right there. We're going to come right back with Sanjay Merchandani, CIO of EMC. We'll be right back. The Cube is this conceptual box, if you will, and we bring people inside of the Cube and then we share ideas. The Cube is a comfortable place. It's a place where people feel happy and are happy to share their knowledge with the world. And uh, we're happy to, to be ambassadors of, of that knowledge transfer.
can I get? Can okay, you, we're back. Uh, can you adjust? And uh, this is a segment with Sanjay Merchandani, CIO of EMC. Now, Sanjay's been on the Cube a couple of times, and um, really has been leading EMC's transformation efforts internally. So the company's not just talking about transformation, they're actually transforming. I was at the CIO event uh, in October, EMC CIO event. Sanjay really keynoted that event and was the sort of highlight at that show, uh, working with a number of EMC CIOs to help them understand how EMC was transforming. Um, Sanjay, it was a really, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good to be here. And so, uh, that was a great event. Uh, it was EMC's first real effort to bring together right, you know, CIOs. And, um, and they used you, EMC used you as a showcase, uh, which is smart, you guys are doing some, some uh, internal transformations. But there was a lot of interest in, around what you were doing. Obviously, a lot of talk about infrastructure transformation, but also new metrics and things like that. Yeah. What did you take away from that event? Well, you know, the whole thing is that people want proof points. The whole thing today is about proof points. And we've been on this journey first in virtualization, then we moved that to cloud, and we've now incorporated, obviously, big data into that. But nobody builds infrastructure for the sake of infrastructure. You want to drive value out of it. And we translated value for the business, for EMC as a customer internally, around agility, speed, time to market. And there's been a shift in the way our internal customers think about things because it's all about, hey, give it to us faster. It doesn't have to be perfect out of the gate, but give it to us quicker so we can work together and get it right. So we've, been, we've, been, we've built out our cloud and now we're working through the layers, of layers on top of that, of, of that cloud, if you would. So things like platform as a service, true business intelligence as a service, um, connectivity between our infrastructure and our, our legacy applications, or if I have the liberty of building out new applications, how do you do that? And then on top of all of that, these devices, we're adding thousands of these devices a month into the network. How do you bring a true user experience and give our users productivity outside of email? Mm -hmm. on this device. So that's what we took away, that customers were interested in these layers. So, so when I hear for something like BI as a service, I think, I get excited. As a business person, I say, oh, can I get access to a self-service BI portal right. and actually begin to interact with data uh, you know, without having to call up you know, an army of IT people? Is right. that the vision? Is that, are you actually doing that? Right, right, and right. So, we'll talk about that a little bit. Yes, we should. Cool. It's actually very exciting because it's the first layer of value that we're adding directly on top of our cloud infrastructure. Right, so the number one area where you have rogue IT or shadow IT, whatever you like to call it, mm -hmm. is some form of business reporting. So users will say, IT can't provide me my reports fast enough, or IT can't provide me the reports the way I want them, or in the format that I want them, or as frequently as I want them. So it's usually, shadow IT, usually, a big percentage of it, is around some kind of reporting system. So, what we decided to do was, we built the cloud infrastructure, We've got the capabilities. We've got Greenplum in place. So what we're doing is we're creating as much of this data that, the custom, that our internal customers want access to, give them one version of the truth. So you take away the noise about where is the data and instead spend time on two things. Helping our internal customers build the skills to do the analytics the way they want it and give them data scientists as a service, as a human service, to really enable them, because we see the data left to right, nobody else does. All elements of data within the company. Mm -hmm. so, so we give them data scientists as a service, and we'll give them, the ability, we'll give them skills around tool sets that they want to use a Microsoft reporting tool or SaaS or something else on top of the Greenplum platform. We're enabling the platform, we're enabling some competency around the tools, and we're enabling data scientists with subject matter expertise in the data. And then, the, and then our internal customers can go off and have a nice day with that information any way they want it. So how do you deal with uh, the issue of credentials? Like who gets to see which data? Well, obviously we put business rules behind all that. So mm -hmm. our security office is involved, you know, and, and we, we, we are now tiering the data based on access, based on you know, profiles, et cetera. So all of that has to come together. So it's not uh, an all or nothing formula. Um, you know, we're bringing best practices into play and, and, and making sure yeah, we those do that. Are, those are things that you understand how to do in a traditional world, right? And, and if it's rogue IT or shadow IT, as you, you know, that now comes into the picture and so you have better control over that stuff. Yeah, so um, we actually just did, you mentioned shadow IT, we just did a survey on IT transformation. We had, one of the questions we asked is, you know, what percent of your, your IT, IT budget, or organization's IT budget is managed by a centralized organization? Yeah. And only about, well, I say only, about 38% said 100%. Yeah. So more than half had, 
some kind of shadow IT, and about 20% had a 25% of the spend or more right. going to shadow IT. Well, it's, it's a real, I mean, and let's be honest, Dave. With cloud computing, stuff that was in the arsenal of IT for years is out in the open. You can get access to the credit card to the same amount of infrastructure in, in a drop of a hat that my IT guys need. So it's just shadow IT has gone out of the, the dark corners of the organization, right into the open, into the cloud. Yeah, it's okay. You know, and so <laughs> it's a whack-a-mole syndrome. Yeah. So we, we're saying you got to either embrace it or get out of the way. Yeah. And so, you know, the pitch that my, my leadership team and I are making to our organization is we have to be the brokers of value. It's not about authorship. It's not about where it was built or where it was written. It's about how soon can we add value to the business. And we have to be the brokers of value all right, and not, it's not all about, hey, if it wasn't written here, it isn't good enough for this, for this company, so. Yeah, you've always been very forward thinking about that. I mean, um, you know, shadow IT freaks out some people. Oh, we got to pull it in, but you're like, you know, okay, fine. Uh, now, I, I want to tie it into the messaging that we're hearing at EMC World. So it's, it's IT transformation, yep. transform IT, or sorry, it's transformation, transform IT, business, and then yourself. yourself. Yeah. Uh, we've said, okay, IT transformation, that's about the cloud, the new, new cloud infrastructure, cloud business world. The business transformation is about data. Um, yes. Unlocking data, value. finding data value. Yeah. And then self, obviously, we make cloud architect, maybe you do no, we, that's science. a big piece of what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Yeah. So, so is that a reasonable way to look at what the messaging is and how that maps from a practitioner's perspective? And I'm trying to squint through, okay, how much of that is marketing and how much is actually implementable? So you've talked about the, the cloud transformation yeah. internally at EMC, IT as a service. Um, how about the data piece? You talk about BI, self-service BI, but how about even going beyond that? Are yeah. you actually getting into that point where you're leveraging that, yeah. are you able to monetize yes. that value? Great question, by the way. Uh, and there's lots of nuances to that, to that question, sure. because when you chunk something down to saying, you know, IT is about, you know, transforming IT is about infrastructure. Well, transforming IT is about infrastructure, self-service, automation, cataloging, and creating the capability to present IT as a service, if that makes sense. Yeah. My goal is to break down the big black box of IT into little black boxes of IT so customers internally can pick and choose what they want at the price points they want and at the service level they want. And I present that up in as much of an automated service catalog as I can. Now, that is transforming IT. Mm. There's a lot of process transformation alongside technology transformation and the U is human transformation, which I'll get to in a minute. Once I've built that, what do, what do our internal customers want? They want big data. We talked about big data. They want anytime, anywhere computing capabilities. So if you've got that sleek little MacBook Air in front of you or the latest Android device that just showed up at your door or an iOS device, they want to be able to compute anywhere they like, on any form factor, any screen, anywhere. We have to render that. So for us today, mobile is an opt-out strategy. So you have to tell me explicitly that you don't want mobile when I give you a solution. <laughs> It's automatically opt-in. Yeah. Two years ago, it was the other way around. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, okay. that's... Now, how do you do that? You do that based on the fact that I've got a cloud infrastructure, and I'm building mobile capabilities on top of that cloud infrastructure to expose elements of that data, manage those devices, create that user experience on top of that infrastructure. Security apps, the whole nine yards. Logging, yeah. monitoring, authentication, yeah. you know, so on and so forth. And so, how do you do that? So that's, that's really transforming you know, the business. How they use it, how they consume it, what they want to do with it, et cetera. Said differently, in the first, so transform IT, transform the business, is transform IT was building the factory floor, building the production line, it was all about IT. Mm -hmm. Transform the business is all about the business. This way you're building the widgets you want off that factory floor. Transform you is what gets the least attention, but it's probably the most pivotal thing in all of this is the bits are going to be just really cool bits on the, on the data center floor unless somebody knows what to do with them and really drive value with it. And so for me, the focus of my leadership team and myself is not so much just about the architectural roadmap, but it's bringing the thousands of people that are involved with IT, whether it be our own people or partners that help us, along with us in this journey in a way that they're showing us the way. I mean, I could come up with this best roadmaps, somebody's got to make them happen. Yeah, and I think you're hitting on a really important point. The, you know, the people piece, we always sort of ignore that. We talk about the technology, but you know well, when you look at the spending that goes on in this industry, the vast majority of it is on people. Um, which, you know, on, on the one hand says, okay, that's important, we're investing in our people, but 
we are in a labor intensive IT economy and, and that's stifling innovation. You talked frequently, as have your colleagues, about the 70-30 mix, 70% goes to running the business, 30% goes to, to, to innovation, but decades of infrastructure investment in silos have really stifled yes. that innovation. And so yes. you got to attack the processy and the people problem, right. or else that's not going to change. We're slaves to that. Yeah. I mean, trust me, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, and so, um, so that, in order for us to move the industry forward, you know, Paul Moritz talks about getting deeper into the business integration. You can't get there you know, if you're you know, stuck in all this IT infrastructure, right? You, you sort of bring the first five minutes of my presentation tomorrow, <laughs> my keynote. <laughs> and, 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 uh, but that's exactly true. Mm. You, know, we've, we've, you know, we say 70% is lights on, 30%, 25%, 30% is innovation. It's not even innovation, it's just new stuff compared to old yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's not maintenance. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's the binary call. You need to get beyond that into true innovation. And, and um, you know, that, that takes a lot of effort. And, and people are so stuck in, I got to get this done, I got to get this out, uh, you know, I got to do this work around, I got to triage this problem, that the technology and the processes are so institutionally complex. If business has gone this way, IT has continued to run this way because we haven't had time to move this way. I think today, when I say today, I mean the, the, the period of, of the technology that we're, that we're in, is the technology lends itself to agility. The business is open to how it needs, and open and, and welcoming to how it wants to consume the technology. Good enough, iterate, agile. And it's up to IT to adapt at this point, to say I'm willing to bring those two things together and really change how I do things for the business. Does that make sense? Yeah, and well, it does, especially in the context of the IT services discussion we had earlier. And we talk about, you said binary, you know, it's either you're, you're maintaining or you're doing something else. Right. I think when organizations, if you can present IT as a service, can start to really align uh, with their, their, their objectives of their, and treat it like a portfolio. Right. Run the business, grow the business, transform the business. Right. And, and maybe align it to business unit and really start to make IT a much more fundamental part of the strategic plan and the operating plan. Right. And that's what excites me. Um, uh, listen, I had one more question for you, uh, and I've been hearing a lot about Propel. I heard, first heard it <laughs> uh, you know, a couple months ago. We heard more about it last week at SAP Sapphire. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah Joe was just talking about Joe Tucci, so you know, I know. He was talking about Propel? Yeah, I, he, didn't, he didn't use that word, but he talked about, Our I asked SAP. him about SAP, and he said, hey, it, it's going live soon. I heard it's going live this summer. <laughs> but, July uh, 5th. July 5th, okay, July 5th. great. So, what's that all about? Okay, so, you know, as, as here's how I like, I like to think about it. For a few years, we were building out infrastructure, and there was a drive for efficiency in the business. So you, it's what I call, you know, when you start trimming the fat, but you got to build back some muscle. Mm -hmm. And the muscle we were trying to build back was our cloud infrastructure, and applications that took us into the future. Right? The business wasn't slowing down their plans because I couldn't keep up with them. They were going just as fast as they had to go. Driving shareholder value, creating new markets, new products, getting and doing the things they had to do. We were working with 10, 12 year old legacy systems, like every other company in our class. They grow fast, grow globally, acquire companies. You're just trying to tread water sometimes and just, just stay afloat. We made a conscious call two and a half years ago to revamp our core systems, our line of business systems. No different than a retail bank pulling out their core retail banking systems yeah. and back-end systems and putting in new ones. Ones they've used on a mainframe for 20 years. <laughs> Very trivial. <laughs> but we, just, we didn't just stop at the app layer. We're completely building out this, this line, a, a new line of business solutions on, in, on what is essentially an um, EMC, VMware, RSA, and partner-friendly technology. So it's SAP on the top at the app layer, vBlock architecture, We've been using the Spring frameworks, Gemfire, all of the other products, you know, the middleware products that, that allow us to move into the cloud from VMware, all built on a V, you know, run on, a, on everything V. Yeah. Right, so the only thing that we're bringing over, over 12 years, is data that we're, that we're spending a lot of time transforming, so they're ready for big data, and the database, physically. Everything else is brand spanking new. So, at every layer of that stack, we are transforming IT, the business, and ourselves. I mean, if you want to encapsulate the, 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 the theme for this event, we're living it. July 5th, my team's been working for the last couple of years. The last couple of months have been torture, as you would imagine, anything of the scale. Um, you know, we close the quarter, we turn on the lights the next morning, and we're on a new system, and we got to take our users through it. 
So, um, you know, the team's done a you know, stellar job, but we still have a, a oh, little yeah. bit ahead of us. July 5th, you'll be on the beach, but Sanjay's team, as <laughs> IT, always pulls the short straw. We don't get a, we don't <laughs> get a long weekend, we don't get a, yeah. probably a very long month, actually. Sanjay so. Merchandani, one of the best CIOs in the business. Uh, we had Oliver Busman on uh, last week, another real innovator, so yeah. I really appreciate your hey, perspectives. Hey, thanks, Dave. Good and, to be uh, here, as always. All right, keep it right there, and we'll be right back.